So in this video, we're going to be working through the first question in the 2015 AP Computer Science exam. The first question involves working through arrays, both single dimension and two dimensional arrays. It requires us to iterate through arrays and use methods that we've already made. So let's start getting through it. This question involves reasoning about one dimensional and two dimensional arrays of integers. You will write three static methods, all of which are in a single enclosing class named diverse array, not shown. The first method returns the sum of the values of a one dimensional array. The second method returns an array that represents the sums of the rows of a two-dimensional array. The third method analyzes row sums. So let's do part A. Write a static method, array sum, that calculates and returns the sum of the entries in a specified one-dimensional array. The following example shows an array ARR1 and the value returned by a call to array sum. So for example, if ARR1, this particular actual parameter, is passed into the method array sum we're going to add up all of the values in ARR1. So 1, 3, 2, 7, 3. The sum of all those five numbers is 16. So the method will return the sum, which is 16. A complete method array sum below. Return the sum of the entries in the one dimensional array ARR. And so let's get started. Up here, we'll write our method. So it returns the sum of the entries in the, in the one dimensional array ARR, which is the parameter that's being passed. It's a static method. Um, it is, we're returning an int. It's called array sum. It's passed an array of integers called ARR. Anytime we want to add something up, the way we always start it off is just by declaring our summing variable. So we'll say int sum gets zero. Uh, and that makes sense because if we're counting something up, we can always just start it from zero and then we can just add from there. So this one's pretty easy. We can do it two ways. We can either use a, well, we could use a while or for loop. Um, I'm going to use an enhanced for loop because an enhanced for loop is useful if we're iterating through values and all we need to do is access the values. So if all we need is to access the values, we can use an enhanced for loop. You can't use an enhanced for loop for modifying values though. So let's go ahead and iterate through the array. So we'll say for int current value in the array ARR. We'll add current value to sum. So remember the way enhanced for loops work is we essentially have this iterating variable that temporarily captures the value at each index in the array, starting at zero all the way to the end of the array. And enhanced for loops are pretty useful because we don't have to handle things like index out of bounds exceptions. We don't have to consider other things like going past the array or checking to see if the array has zero values in it. If it's a, uh, if it's a null array, it's all fine. So if we, so we can just go through and just add current value to sum. And then all we have to do is return sum. And that's all we have to do for this question. It's actually a pretty easy question. Um, alternatively, we could have done it with a regular for loop by starting at index zero. And we could go through and starting at index zero in ARR, we just keep, we just keep adding uh, to sum the current value at, at that index. But I'm just not going to talk about this question too much more. This isn't really the hardest question here. So the second question write a static method row sums that calculates the sums of each of the rows in a given two-dimensional array and returns these sums in a one-dimensional array. The method has one parameter, a two-dimensional array R2D of int values. The array is in row major order. So that means that we're looking at the, uh, the rows first and then the column second. So R2D, RC, is the entry at row R and column C. The method returns a one-dimensional array with one entry for each row of R2D, such that each entry is the sum of the corresponding rows in R2D. As a reminder, each row of a two-dimensional array is a one-dimensional array. For example, if mat1 is the array represented by the following table, the call row sums mat1 returns the array 16, 32, 28, 20. So one thing you want to remember is that the length of an array is going to be the number of rows is the name of the array dot length, and the number of columns is the name of the array zero dot length. So basically, it's the length of the zeroth row of the array. So let's go ahead and try to solve this problem. Assume that array sum works as specified, regardless of what you wrote in part A. You must use array sum appropriately to receive full credit. So that means we have to use array sum. 
Um, and that, you know, like I said, it's, it says assume that it already works. So you don't have to worry about whether it works or not. Just call over a sum and assume it does what it says it's going to do. Complete method row sums below. Returns a one-dimensional array in which the entry at index k is the sum of the entries of row k of the two-dimensional array r2d. So it's a static method. We, uh, it returns an array of ints, called, and the method is called row sums. It's passed a two-dimensional array of ints called r2d. So let's go through it. So the first thing we want to do is get our resulting array. Let's declare that. So we'll say int, and then we'll call it result gets. And if you think about it, we want it to be the same length as the number of rows in R2D. So if we want to get the number of rows, when we, ins when we initialize the array, we'll say we want it to have the length R2D dot length. So, it's gonna, so that means the result is going to have the same length as R2D's number of rows. So now what we need to do, let's put some comments here. So we want to initialize the uh, resulting array spell resulting right there we go and the next thing we want to do is iterate through r2d's rows calling array sum on each row and then placing those values i'll say calling array sum on each row k okay? and then placing those values at index k in the array result. To do this, we have to iterate through the rows in R2D. So for this one, I'll just use a regular for loop. So we'll say for int k, and usually I would use a name like, I would use a variable name like row, because I think it's more descriptive, but I'm just using k because that's the way um, they described it in the actual AP question. So we'll start at zero. And we'll say while k is less than r2d dot length. So while k is less than the number of rows in r2d. And then we'll have an incrementing k plus plus at the end. Basically, we're going to go through each row, call array sum, and then take that value and put it in result here. So we need to place, so first of all, we need to place something at index k in the array result. But then we actually need to call, we need to find the sum of the row k in the array. So we'll say array sum r2d k. That's all we have to do. So what this will do is it looks at each row. If you remember, you can treat each row essentially as its own array. The way two-dimensional arrays actually work is essentially you just have a bunch of arrays inside of other arrays. So at each row, so for example row 0, when you see that, I'll, I'll pull this up, so when you see that row zero has these five values in these five columns. Essentially what you're looking at is mat one is a, it's a four element single dimension array first. And then inside that array, you have other arrays. So row zero is essentially a single dimension array that has five int values in it. So when we call array sum on row zero, we're actually getting the sum of the array going across here. So that's why this works. And basically that's it. And then we just have to return result and that's it. So that's how you can get the row sums here. So let's just go through, I just wanna make sure no mistakes here, no typos. So we first of all, we initialize the array, the resulting array. So we said uh, it's gonna be an array of ints matching like here called result. And we initialized it with new int. And we wanted, we wanted result to be the same as the number of rows in R2D, which is R2D dot length. Then we have to iterate through R2D's rows, calling array sum on each row k, and then placing those values at index k in the array result. Uh, and that's what we did here. So we started at k is 0, while k is less than r2d.length, and we just simply called array sum on r2d k. So that's on row k in the array, in the original uh, parameter passed array. And then we assign that value to result k, which is our resulting array at index k. And then we just return result. And that's all we have to do. So let's go ahead and do the last one, which is writing the isDiverse method. And this is probably, uh, well, this is definitely the most complicated one in this question. So let's go through it. 
A two-dimensional array is diverse if no two of its rows have entries that sum to the same value. In the following example, the array mat1 is diverse because each row sum is different, but the array mat2 is not diverse because the first and last rows have the same sum. So for example, mat1 is diverse because all the row sums are unique. Mat2 is not diverse because the row sums are not unique, because row 0 and row 3 both have row sums of 14. Where a static method is diverse that determines whether or not a given two-dimensional array is diverse. The method has one parameter, a two-dimensional array R2D of int values. The method should return true if all the row sums in the given array are unique, otherwise it should return false. In the array shown above, the call is diverse mat1 returns true and the call is diverse mat2 returns false. We have access to array sum and row sums, so let's see what we're going to need. Assume that array sums and row sums work as specified regardless of what you wrote in parts A and B. You must use row sums appropriately to receive full credit. So uh, complete is diverse below. So we have to use row sums, we don't have to use array sums here. So let's go through it. Really, if you think about it, we don't actually even need to do too much with the original two-dimensional array because all we're actually concerned about are the sums of the row. And you might notice that with these AP questions, when you're making multiple methods and you're using those methods in uh, the next iteration of that subsection, that really what you're doing is you're kind of building on top of something to make more complicated methods out of smaller methods. So it forces you to break down the problem that you're trying to solve. And this is the resulting problem that you're really trying to solve, writing this is diverse method. So since all we really need to figure out are if all the row sums are unique, why don't we just capture the result of invoking row sums on R2D. So we'll say int uh, row sums array gets, and then we'll say array uh, row sums R2D. So now we have this array, row sums array. So we initialize the array of row sums of R2D. So that's gonna be really useful. So really now what we need to do is we basically, this, is, this becomes a smaller problem, which is how do you figure out if all of the values in a one dimensional array, because row sums array is a one dimensional array now, are unique. And there are a few ways to do this, but I think the way that we'll try to do it is by essentially going through, we'll have two pointing variables that look at one value and a second value, and we basically just compare every value in the array to each other. There are more efficient ways to do it, but really this is kind of like the most uh, simple brute force way to do it. So we'll do it like that. So now we need to use two pointing variables to compare all the sums in row sums array to each other. If at any point the two variables are pointing to equal values, return false. And basically, if we get through the entire for loop and everything's fine and we never actually return false, then we can just return true at the end. So now we just need to make our for loop. So int pointer one gets started at zero. The idea is that we're gonna be iterating through and we want pointer one to always be less than whatever pointer two is looking at in terms of like what index we're looking at. In fact, I'm not even gonna call it pointer, I'm just gonna call it index one. So we'll say index one gets zero. While index one is less than, and we're gonna say row sums array dot length minus one. And the reason we're saying minus one here, and we're base we want index one to be to capture all indexes from zero to the next to last index of row sums array. And the reason is because our, with our last comparison, we're gonna be comparing whatever index one is looking at to whatever index two is looking at. And we want index one to always be before index two. So we'll say index one plus plus incremented there. So then we have our second for loop, we'll have index two. We don't need to start index two at zero, we'll start it at one, because we just want index two to always be greater than index one when we're, when we're iterating through. So we'll say, in, while index two is less than for this one, we'll say row sums array dot length. So for this one, we actually want index two to capture the, or to look at the last index in the array. And we'll increment that by one. And basically what we need to do is we need to just continuously make comparisons. So we'll say, if whatever index one is looking at, so if row sums array index one is equal 
to row sums array index two return plus. And we actually don't even need these curly braces um, since we're only everything only has one line here. So we can actually just condense the, the method like this. And this should just work. So we initialize the array of row sums of R2D in row sums array. We use two pointing variables to compare all sums in row sums array to each other. If at any point the two variables are pointing to equal values, return false. So we start index one at zero. While index one is less than row sums array dot length minus one, which basically means that we want index one to look at every index from zero in row sums array to the next to last index, and we increment index one by one. Then in, in the inner for loop, we'll say for in, int index two it gets one. While index two is less than row sums array dot length, which is the, uh, so we're gonna have index two go all the, all the way up to the last index, and we'll increment index two by one. We just make the comparison. If those two values that we're looking at currently are equal at any time, we can always just return false. And remember that if we return something, we immediately exit the method. So if we just return false, we're good to go. And then if we get through the entire for loop and nothing happens, we can just return true because it uh, it's necessary to uh, postulate that R2D is actually a diverse array. So here are the scoring guidelines for question one. So let's let's just check our work here. Um, so over, for array sum, we need to we get a point for accessing all elements of ARR and no bounds errors, and then we need to initialize, compute, and return some of the elements. So using the enhanced for loop uh, means that we're accessing all elements of the of R with no bounds errors. So we already did that. Um, so if you use the traditional for loop and not an enhanced for loop, you'd have to make sure that you're not going beyond the last index of the array. And you get a point for initializing, computing, and returning to some of the elements. So here's where we initialize it, we compute it, and we return it. So this is a full two points. Row sums, we can get four points here. So first, we get a point for constructing a correctly sized 1D array of ints. So here's where we initialize it and we initialized it as the number of rows in R2D, so that's a point. Accesses all words in R2D. We go through and we start at zero and we iterate through until K is equal to R2D.length, so we actually go through all indexes of the array. Compute sum of row in R2D using array sum and assigns the element to element in 1D array. So here's where we assign it and here's where we call array sum. And we get a point for returning the 1D array where kth element is computed sum of corresponding row in 2D array for all rows. And here's where we return it. So that one's good too. Let's check is diverse. So we get a point for computing and using the array of row sums from R2D using row sums. Here's where we did this. Compare all and only pairs of row sums for equality. No bounds errors on row sums array. Point not awarded if no adjustment when compares any row sums with itself. So we didn't even compare anything to itself because we did this index one and index two thing right. Um, and returns true if all compared row sums are different and false otherwise. And there we go. Question specific penalties uses get length, get size for array size. We did not do that. We use length. That's good. And destruction of persistent data. So basically don't overwrite ARR or R2D. Like anytime a parameter is passed, unless it specifically tells you to do so, and I can't even think of an example of an AP question that will even tell you to do that, Make sure you don't destroy data. Um, so here's here's how the AP exam says that you can write this. So array sum looks very similar to what we did. Um, personally, I like our formatting better, but it's pretty much the same. Uh, so for row sums, once again, they did the same thing. For this one, they actually used an enhanced for loop as well, because we really all we needed to do was access each row. So since we're not actually modifying the row, we could have used an enhanced for loop there. That would have actually been totally fine. Um, and then for is diverse, they did the same thing as us. They set up the single dimension array of row sums. Um, they set up this for loop with two pointing variables. Um, they use like things like i and j for pointing variables. I really don't like doing that because I think, at least for me personally, I get very confused when I have a bunch of variables that are like a, b, c, i, j, it, it, it confuses me. Um, so I like to be very descriptive, even though we use a lot more characters. It's much easier for me to think about, okay, this is index one, this is index two. I get, uh, and that kind of makes it so that I'm a lot less likely to make an error 
if I do that. So personally, I like doing that. Uh, College Board, when they show you how to do, how they would have done it, will generally do it like this, where they just have you know very short names for the, especially uh, incrementing for v variables that go up or down.